Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be covering MRA and I'm going to do this in two separate videos. In this video I'm going to give an overview of what MRA is, how it works and so forth. And I'm also going to talk about uh, certificates and how the whole process works with uh, the Expressway Corn Edge. And then finally I'm going to talk about DNS which is an important aspect to this because uh, you can't build your certificates until you've configured DNS. Okay, and then uh, in the next video, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and do a walkthrough so that I can show you how to set up your Expressway servers, build your certificates and all that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now in the previous video, we talked about traversal and MRA works a lot like traversal, uh, but there are some significant differences. So let's start by talking about what MRA is in principle and uh, how it operates. So if you have a CCM and a firewall, historically, if an endpoint was sitting outside that firewall, the way that the phone would register to the CCM was by using a VPN tunneling protocol. And that was fine, except the problem is that VPNs are not always easy to set up. And remote workers, they may not always have access to the VPN. For example, a salesperson using Jabber on their PC, they might not have a VPN set up. And so, you know, for example, they wouldn't be able to do audio calling. Okay, so after the VCS came into the picture, what Cisco decided to do was to introduce a new device called the Expressway Corn Edge. And these, again, are basically the same thing as the VCS, and we talked about this before, but the main difference being the licenses. And so these servers are then able to do mobile rem remote access, MRA, so that you don't have to use VPNs anymore. Okay, so the idea is to create a VPN-less uh, connection for this endpoint to be able to register into the network, to the CCM. So how does MRA work? Well, because we're still working with the Expressway Core and Edge, we still need to set up that traversal communication between these two to get through the firewall. And the traversal zones are going to work pretty much the same as what I explained in the previous video. But there are some differences, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And then uh, you also have to set up MRA on the Expressway Core and Edge. Uh, but when you set up MRA on the core server, the MRA settings actually take over some of the control of the Expressway core. And uh, what it'll do is it'll automatically set up a neighbor zone to your CUCM. Now, in addition, if you have an I'm in present server, it'll automatically set up a neighbor zone to your I'm in present server as well. Okay, however, if you have CUC, Cisco Unity Connection for voicemail, uh, it won't set up neighbor zones there. The neighbor zones only go to the CCM and the I'm in present server. CUC is controlled by the CCM and all CUC media will go through the CUCM. However, by setting up a Unity Connection in an Expressway core with MRA, uh, it allows voicemail traffic to go through this uh, traversal solution as well. So what happens then when this endpoint tries to register? Remember, the idea is to provide a way for the endpoint to register to the CUCM. So when it tries to register, the Expressway Edge says, hey, Expressway Core, uh, someone's trying to register. And then the Expressway Core then says, hey, CUCM, someone's trying to register. Okay, and then the CUCM says uh, to the Core, it says, okay, let them register. And the core then says to the edge, uh, okay, let them register. And then, of course, the edge says to the endpoint, okay, you're allowed to register. And uh, then, of course, the endpoint registers to the CCM. Okay, so then if I had another endpoint inside the firewall that was already registered to the CCM, now these two endpoints can call each other. Okay, now all of the signaling is going to go through the CCM, but then the actual media will go through the expressway core and edge. Okay, so that's just a general overview of how MRA works. Now I want to spend just a few minutes talking about certificates because this is sort of an intricate and complex process which kind of trips up a lot of people. So let's talk about that for just a minute. Now when you're dealing with certificates, you're going to have your server and this could be anything. It could be your Expressway Core, your Expressway Edge, a Cisco meeting server, or, or it could even be a file server or a web server. Okay, it doesn't matter. Certificates are pretty much the same no matter what kind of server you're dealing with. Okay, and then you're also going to have your certificate authority. Now, this could be a private certificate authority like a Microsoft certificate server, uh, which happens to be what I'm going to be using when I demo this in the next video. 
or it could be a public certificate authority, meaning that it would be owned by some third party and uh, then you would just lease certificates from them. Uh, this would be companies like uh, VeriSign, for example. So what happens is the first thing you have to do is generate a certificate signing request, uh, also referred to as a CSR. And then you have to download that CSR so that you can turn around and then upload it to your certificate authority server. Then you're going to use your certificate authority server to sign your CSR. Okay, And then once you do this, uh, you then need to turn around and download that signed certificate along with a CA certificate. Now the CA certificate basically points to the authority. It says, hey, if, if you want to verify this signed certificate, verify that it's, that it's valid, you need to go to that authority. Okay. So if someone took this certificate here and they tried to copy it or manipulate it or change it in some way, it wouldn't work because there are components within that certificate that the CA certificate identifies that says, you know, whether it's valid or not. Okay, so I know that's really a really simplistic and, and perhaps abstract explanation. And the truth is this can be a really deep rabbit hole, you know, depending on how deep you want to go with it. But for today, I just want to give you, you know, the gist of it so that you can understand, you know, what's going on when we go through the demo. Okay, so then you're going to upload both the signed certificate and the CA certificate back into your server. So that's the process generically. Uh, but when we're talking about setting up MRA, we have to remember that we actually have two servers, an Expressway Core and an Expressway Edge. So this means that we have to go through all of these steps twice, one for each server. Now, this is true. However, since we're going to use the same certificate authority server for both my core and edge servers, I can use the same CA certificate. So on the second pass, when I uh, go through the second server, I don't have to download a new one from the certificate server. I can just use the same CA certificate that I had downloaded in the first pass. Okay, and if none of this makes any sense, don't worry, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in the next video when I walk you through each of these steps. Okay. All right, the last thing that I want to address in this video is DNS. And I need to address this now because when I go to demonstrate how to set everything up and configure the servers, the one thing that I can't demo is DNS. And this is simply because I don't have access to it in my lab. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you now what you need to do and you should be able to do that on your own. Okay, so before you do anything, uh, you'll need to set up DNS first. And the main reason is simply because you can't build your certificates until DNS is configured. Now, the way this works is your endpoints are going to use DNS so that they always search for the CUCM SRV record first. And if it can't find the CUCM, then it'll search for the Expressway E. Now, it doesn't matter if the endpoint is internal or external. Either way, the Expressway E can be located with an SRV lookup. However, your endpoint shouldn't search for the edge server unless it's on the outside of the network, right? Otherwise, if it's on the inside, uh, it can just register directly to the CUCM. So the idea is that the endpoint's going to search for the CUCM first, but if it fails, then there is this alternate route that, that it can register through uh, the core and edge using MRA. So your external DNS server needs to be configured with this service record. And the reason for this is so that endpoints sitting outside your network can discover that they should use MRA. And the service records needs to point to each cluster member of the edge server. So here are some examples of the service records needed on a public DNS for two Cisco Expressway edge servers clustered together. Okay, so that's the external DNS server. The internal DNS server has to be configured with this SRV record. And the reason for this is so that endpoints inside the network will know to register directly to the CUCM. Okay, now when you're using I am in present services, and, and by the way, when I do the demo, I'm, I'm not going to concern myself with I am in presence. Uh, but just for your information, when you're using I am in present services, you're also going to need this SRV record on your internal DNS server. So this is just like when the public DNS SRV records have to refer to the edge servers, the internal DNS SRV records needs to also refer to all call processing nodes of a CUCM cluster and all IMMP server SRV records. Okay. Now the internal DNS records need to be available to all internal endpoints and your Expressway core. 
the CUCM and IMMP server SRV records must not be resolvable from outside the internal network. Otherwise, your endpoints won't use MRA through your Edge server. Okay. So again, here are some examples of the SRV records you'll need for private DNS. This would be for two CUCMs and two IMMP servers clustered together. Okay, that'll do it for part one. Uh, again, in the next video, I'm going to walk you through each of the steps for setting up MRA on your Expressway Edge, your Expressway Core, and uh, setting up a user on the CUCM. Okay, so definitely stay tuned for that. I'll be putting that out very soon. Otherwise, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.